Hujambo mpenzi msikilizaji na mpenzi mtazamaji popote pale ambapo unatigia itaya ya Radio Waumini 88.3 FM ni siku ya Jumanne siku ambayo huwa tunakutana katika makala yetu ya kila juma makala ya afya katika makala haya tukipata kuangazia masuala mbalimbali yanayohusu afya ili kuweza kusaidia wenzetu ambao wamebeba mzigo huu pengine kwa kuwapa matumaini na vile vile kupata kuwaelekeza pale ambapo wanaweza kupata usaidizi Jina langu ni Monique Wangui Rungu na hivi punde utaweza kumjua mgeni tulie naye ndani ya studio na swala ambalo tutakuwa tunaliangazia ni ule uraibu wa pombe ukipenda alcoholism ni swala ambalo limekuwa ni swala tata katika jamii katika taifa letu visa vya hivi karibuni tukiwa tumepoteza watu katika kijiji moja zaidi ya watu 15 ni swala ambalo lahitaji kuangaliwa kwa makini na tunajua ya kwamba viongozi katika nyanja mbalimbali wamekuwa uh, wameku kitoa wito kwa serikali kwa wana jamii pale kuweza kuwashika mkono wenzetu ambao wamepotelea katika uraibu wa pombe na bila kupoteza wakati basi nimkaribisha mgeni wa siku ya leo atapata kujitambulisha kwako na pia atuelekeze na tueleze anafanya kazi wapi hujambo na karibu sana Asante sana Bi Monica mm-hmm. e, tumsifu Yesu Kristo msikilizaji mm-hmm. wa Radio Waumini mimi naitwa Joseph Kamau, mimi ni mwana psychologia na pia addiction counselor mm-hmm. na nimefurahi sana kuwa hapa leo kuzungumzia mambo ya uraibu wa pombe kwa sababu haya ni mambo ambayo yana affect familia nyingi mm-hmm. na najua kwa kila moja wetu katika ile tunasema either kwa nuclear ama extended family kunaye mtu ambaye ana struggle na hii shida ya alcoholism mm. ama alcohol use disorder. Mm-hmm. Asante. Asante sana Joseph na karibu sana kwa makala ya jioni hii ya leo na najua umepata kusikia utangulizi wangu. Swala ambalo tumeweza kulishuhudia hivi majuzi ya kwamba kijiji kimoja kinaweza poteza watu zaidi ya kumi kutokana na na uraibu wa, wa pombe. Yeah. Sijui na lipi la kusema kabla tuingie katika mada yetu hiyo nayo ni ukweli kabisa mm-hmm. kuna watu wengi sana ambao wameadhirika kutokana na hii mambo ya uraibu wa pombe mm-hmm. ni swala ambalo limekuwa ni kama pandemic katika mm-hmm. nchi yetu ya Kenya na katika mikoa tofauti tofauti na kulingana na uchunguzi ambao umefanywa na wataalamu mm-hmm. tuseme tukuti ile study ilifanywa na na kada mwaka wa 2022 mm-hmm. inaonyesha ya kwamba wakenya wengi sana wameingilia mambo ya pombe na hiyo study inaonyesha ya kwamba kwa, kwa wakenya wanane kila mkenya mkenya mmoja ashaingilia mambo ya kutumia pombe mm-hmm. na pia inaonyesha ya kwamba wanaume sana sana ndio wameadhirika kwa sababu kwa kila kwa kila wanaume watano mwanaume mmoja ana struggle ana tumia pombe mm-hmm. na 40% ya wale watu ambao wanatumia pombe already washafika ile kiwango tunaweza sema wako na uraibu ama wako na ad- alcohol use disorder ama ile watu wanaita addiction mm-hmm. ndio wa wow, okay na hizo ni takrimu ambazo ni za hivi karibuni lakini unapotaja wanaume pia tumeshuhudia wanawake because uh, hata kisa kilichofanyika kule Kirinyaga bado kulikuwa na wanawake mm-hmm. sijui hali yao iko vipi pia wanawake wameadhirika kabisa mm-hmm. e, study inaonyesha ya kwamba wanaume ndio wengi mm-hmm. but hiyo sio kumaanisha ya kwamba wanawake hawajaadhirika wako wengi ambao wameadhirika na kulingana na vile tunao culture inaendelea iki change mm. culture tofauti tofauti za huku kwetu Kenya mm. unapata wana, wanawake wengi pia wameshaanza kuingilia mambo ya ulevi kwa hivyo kuna, kuna there is a very high likelihood that kuna wakati utafika ambao utapata pia wanawake wengi zaidi wameadhirika mm-hmm. ndio na pengine tukiangalia jinsi haya matumizi yanafanyika kama vile uraibu ama hii addiction inapata kuathiri watu tukilinganisha kule vijijini kule mashambani na, na mitaani ni wapi ambapo tuweza sema kuna kuna madhara zaidi kulingana na zile studies zimefanywa na nakada mm. e, zimefanywa kimikoa mm-hmm. na mkoa wa western unaonyesha kwamba huko ndio Uraibu umekuwa katika hali ya juu zaidi mm-hmm. na ni kwa sababu 
pia watu huko unapata wanaweza kujipikia zile pombe zenye ni illegal mm. na wanaweza kutumia mkoa wa central pia umeadhirika kwa kiwango kikubwa na sana sana kwa sababu hizi zenye tunaita portable spirits zimekuwa zikienea kwa hali ya juu zaidi. Mm -hmm. Kwa hivyo ni ngumu kusema ati ya kwamba hii ni shida ambayo iko katika mijini, iko pia vijijini mm -hmm. na inalingana pia na ile tunasema accessibility ya hizi vileo. Mm -hmm. Ndiyo. Okay. Na kwa kuwa mada yetu jioni hii leo tunazungumzia addiction ya pombe. Hebu tuangalie inaanza vipi? Sasa kitu ya kwanza mm -hmm. ambayo ni muhimu sana tuangazie addiction tukisema alcoholism ama alcohol use disorder mm -hmm. e, tunasema hii utumiaji wa pombe mm -hmm. umefika kiwango kile ambacho umekuwa ni ugonjwa na huwa tunasema alcoholism is ama addiction is a brain disease mm -hmm. hii ni kumaanisha ya kwamba wakati mtu ameanza kutumia pombe kuna kiwango kinafika unapata hii pombe imeweza kuadhiri ubongo na kucheju ubongo to a point ile tunasema huyu mtu ako na ugonjwa sio maneno tu ya behavior but pia ni kitu ambayo ni mambo ambayo ina cause changes to the brain na sasa ndio ifike hiyo kiwango chenye sasa utumiaji wa pombe umeadhiri ubongo mm -hmm. kuna zile stages zenye huwa mtu anapitia na ya kwanza ile e, ile stage watu ile stage watu wengi huanza ni ile tunaita experimenting stage experimenting ni pale unapata E, mtu ameingizwa katika ukunywa kipombe na marafiki sana sana ina happen katika zile teenage years ama early adulthood mm -hmm. katika teenage years sana sana ukipata mzazi anatumia labda amekuja na kinywaji nyumbani ameweka kwenye fridge mtoto anaweza ku access so mtoto ule akiwa those teenage years anataka ku explore utapata saa zingine anaonja onja ile pombe kwa hivyo hii ni ile stage experimentation wengine saa zingine wakati wameingia campus marafiki wanakunywa ameitwa abash ama zile wanasema sherehe ameenda sherehe so ame anapata wanakuwa introduced at that age katika hiyo age hiyo stage of experimenting na kitu moja inaweza tokea kwenye hii stage of experimenting ni ile tunaita binge drinking unapata mtu ameanza kuonja onja lakini nafika mahali pia anaanza anakunywa pombe mingi kwa wakati mmoja hakunywi kila wakati lakini saa zingine wakati ameenda hizo wanaita sherehe unapata wakati huwa anakunywa mingi na kuna madhara mengi ambayo yanatokana na hii tunaita binge drinking so hiyo ndio hiyo ni stage ya kwanza so stage ya pili ni ile sasa tunasema ni increased tolerance inamaanisha sasa tushavuka katika hii stage ya experimentation mm -hmm. tolerance inamaanisha sasa mwili umeshaanza kuzoea pombe hatulewi tuk, mtu halewi akikunywa ile kidogo alikuwa analewa akikunywa mm. sasa anahitaji pombe mingi na hapa ndio tunapata sasa sherehe ni kama inashika unapata wanateremsha wanasema mzinga ama pombe anakunywa pombe mingi ndio waweze kupata ile ulevi na sasa hi, kwenye hii stage pia kuna hiyo madhara ya binge drinking kwa sababu mm -hmm. wakati mwili inaendelea ku develop tolerance unapata pia ni mwili ni kama inaendelea kuitisha ile pombe mm -hmm. ni kama ile hamu ya kukunywa mingi zaidi inaendelea ikiongezeka na itaendelea kuongezeka katika hizi stages zingine na after tolerance hapo tunaingia kwenye stage ya tatu e, ambayo sasa tunasema ni ile problem drinking sasa mashida zinaanza kutokea mm -hmm. unapata e, sasa watu wameshaanza kunotisia kwamba huyu mtu mwenye anaanza kukua mlevi labda kama ni shule haendi kama ni kazi ameshaanza kuchelewa ama kwenda kazi akiwa mlevi so already sasa hii utumiaji pombe ishakuwa ina cause problem katika maisha ya huyu mtu mm -hmm. lakini sasa kwa wakati huu pia unapata e, huyu mtu mwenyewe haja kubali ya kwamba e, imefika tu level sasa imezidi mm -hmm. bado wako in that stage of denial na saa zingine unapata pia wana familia pia wako in denial wanaambiwa na watu wengine ya kwamba mpendwa wao anatumia pombe sana na inamlemea kwa maisha lakini wao kwa sababu hawataki kukubali na hawataki kwa hawa, wa, 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 hawataki kwa knowledge ya kwamba imekuwa shida so wanakana ile ile shida lakini hii ni shida ambayo inaendelea na hapo sasa ndio unapata sasa inaingia katika stage ya nne na sasa hii ndio tunaita alcohol dependence sasa huyu ni mtu amefika to a point that hawezi kufanya ha, mostly ana function lakini lazima atumie pombe mm -hmm. wale tunasemanga functional alcoholics mm -hmm. labda sasa kazi alikuwa ameweza ku maintain 
hata kama saa zingine anachelewa na anakuja akiwa amelewa bado anaweza ku ile kazi lakini ndio aweze ku function kwenye ile kazi lazima akue amelewa na unapata kwa wakati huu pia unaweza pata mtu anatumia pombe mara kadhaa kwa siku ndio tampata ni mlevi asubuhi ndio anafanya kazi but ni mlevi asubuhi mm-hmm. labda ni mlevi pia jioni e, so hii pombe inakuwa ni kama pia imefika to a point ndio aweze ku function ndio aweze kufanya kazi zake lazima alewe na pia hapa unaweza pata pia these problems pia zinaendelea ku increase hizi social problems health problems pia also start zinaweza pia anza kujitokeza mm-hmm na probably utapata kwa hii stage pia either wame lose familia ama pia familia sasa imeanza kuona hapa kuna shida wameanza kujaribu ku intervene na katika ile harakati unapata pia alcohol tolerance ya huyu mtu wa struggle na addiction imeendelea kuongezeka mm-hmm. na sasa ina push tu ile tunasema ni stage ya tano ambayo sasa ni hiyo full blown alcoholism ama alcohol addiction Like it... tutakuja hapo Joseph eh? mm-hmm. hapo kwa yenye stage ya tano yeah. lakini maswala mabili ningependa kwanza tu yaangalia katika ile stage ya kwanza unasema mm-hmm. ni ile ya kujaribia experiment ile na itakuwaje ya kwamba hao ambao wanakunywa pamoja kuna yule ambaye atakuwa addicted mm-hmm. na mwingine mm-hmm. yeye yeah, tu sawa e, kitu moja ina happen uh-huh. e, ikifika mambo ya addiction e, kitu ya kwanza na kitu muhimu kujua ni kwamba kila mtu anaweza transition na anaweza pitia hizi stages zote mm-hmm. na aenda pakiwa na hii ugonjwa ya addiction mm-hmm. lakini kuna wale watu ambao tunaona wako na very highly like high likelihood ya kudevelop addiction na sana sana hizi eh, ndizo tunaita risk factor factors mm-hmm. risk factor number one ni mtu ambaye ameanza kutumia pombe akiwa very young mm-hmm. tuseme ameanza akiwa teenage years the brain bado ina develop sana sana na utumizi wa pombe sana huadhiri ubongo ina cause ile condition tunaita brain atrophy meaning ni kama ubongo una shrink mm-hmm. na ikifika to that point sasa unapatanga zile pathways za addiction kwenye ubongo zina develop eh, virahisi kuliko kwa mtu ambaye ameanza uraibu akiwa mzee na tukisema mtu m, m, e, mdogo ama mwiyang ni mtu e, mwenye hajafikisha umri wa miaka 25. Mm-hmm. So m, as I have said mtu akianza pombe akiwa e, mchanga there is that high likelihood that it a develop to addiction. Mm-hmm. E, another risk factor ni ile tunaita trauma. Kuna watu unapata maybe amelelewa kwenye familia ambayo mambo yenye yalikosa a lot of emotional pain tuseme labda ni mtoto alilelewa kwenye familia yenye wazazi walikuwa na gombana wanapigana hizi mambo huwa zinaadhiri eh, the emotions of a child na unapata anabeba huyo emotional pain ama huo mzigo eh, kwenye roho yake unapata wakati hizi feelings zimekuwa repressed na huyo mtoto amekuwa mtu mzima amekufika ile miaka ya rebellion niyo ya teenage years E, ile uchungu ambayo amefungia ndani kulingana na mambo ambayo alifanyika akiwa mtoto mdogo tuseme either maybe hata aliabuziwa physically ama sexually mm-hmm. hiyo uchungu yenye imefungiwa ndani inaweza mpush kwa kutumia pombe kwe, ama madawa mm-hmm. ku deal na hiyo emotional pain hiyo tuwa tunaita self medicating so trauma eh, if it's not dealt with kama huyu mtoto haja go through counseling hajafanyiwa counseling eh kudeal na hizo mambo zilifanyika utapata pia imefika to that point of addiction. Kitu ya tatu ambayo pia inafanya mtu akue very prone to addiction ni mental health conditions. Na kuna mental health conditions ambazo ni purely medical they, that may need to be managed medically na pia psychologically. Tuseme ya condition kama clinical depression. Mm-hmm. If someone has this condition and it's not treated there's a likelihood hiyo uchungu ambayo hiyo emotional pain ambayo inatokana na hii condition inaweza mpush kwenda kutumia pombe na kuingilia uraibu akijaribu kutuliza ule uchungu ambao unatokana na hii condition ndio mm-hmm. Ningependa pia tuangalie hilo swala la health bali mm. na the mental health yes. kuna madhara mengine kwa kwa mwili magonjwa mag, uh, mengine gani ambayo yanaweza kuathiri mtu huyu ambaye yako kwa addiction E, kitu ya kwanza pombe mm-hmm. huwa inaadhiri sehemu tofauti tofauti za mwili mm-hmm. na sehemu ya kwanza ni ile tunaita the liver mm-hmm. na wakati mtu unatumia pombe sana unafanya una overburden the liver e, na liver liver ndio huwa ina metabolize pombe ama ina break down pombe mm-hmm. so wakati kiwango cha pombe kimekuwa juu zaidi liver itashindwa kufanya kazi yake na inaanza kukua damaged 
kabisa. So hiyo ina lead to condition inajulikana kama liver cirrhosis mm. na kuna nyingine pia inajulikana kama liver hepatitis. Na pia kuna another damage na happen kwenye figo ama kidneys na kwa sababu pia zinahusika katika ile zile processes za mwili ambazo zinakuwa affected na pombe. Na unaweza pata sasa iki, kidneys ikikuwa affected by pombe, magonjwa tofauti tofauti yanatokea, moja wapo ikiwa ni blood pressure na pombe pia inaadhiri pancreas e, na pancreas unaweza pata mtu ame develop to a point sasa amepata ile inaitwa pancreatitis. Na hii condition unaweza pata ina lead to shida kama diabetes ambazo kuna magonjwa mengi zaidi ambayo yanatokana na utumiaji wa pombe pia saratani mm. uchunguzi umefanywa na umeonekana kwamba kuna saratani tofauti tofauti ambazo zinatokana na utumiaji wa pombe kwa mfano saratani ya mdomo saratani ya koo saratani ya utumbo mm-hmm. na saratani ya the rectal cancer mm-hmm. zote zinaweza tokana na utumiaji mbaya wa pombe mm-hmm. na madhara mengi kweli na tukiangalia katika ile stage yani ambapo umezungumzia kwamba kuna dependency yeah. wamaanisha nini haswa difference ya alcohol dependency na alcohol addiction mm. ni kwamba for dependency mm-hmm. inamaanisha huyu mtu anahitaji hii pombe ndio aweze kufanya mambo yake ya kila siku mm-hmm. e, na ndio tulisema anaweza kuwa ni functional alcoholic kumaanisha labda anaenda kazi but lazima akunywe pombe ndio aweze kufanya kazi. Mm-hmm. Now, ikifika ni full brown addiction, imefika to a point that e, utumiaji wa pombe sasa mm-hmm. ume overtake hata ile kazi. Hawezi fanya kazi. Ako fully preoccupied na kutumia ile pombe. Na so kabla afanye kitu kwanza ahakikisha kwamba ame, amekunywa eh? katika ile stage ambayo tunasema ni ya alcohol dependence. Uh-huh. Sasa alcohol full blown alcohol addiction mm-hmm. huyu mtu sasa ni pombe ndio inapreoccupy kila kitu. So hakuna kitu ingine anafanya apart from kutumia pombe. Mm-hmm. Na pale utapata hata mtu ana neglect usafi wake wa mwili. Mm-hmm. Hata hakuli chakula, labda amefika to a point eh, ataenda kuiba ndio apate ile pombe mm-hmm. kama nyumbani especially kama kuna hawa watu tunaita enablers unapata hata saa zingine na threaten na kukuwa violent ndio aweze kupatiwa pesa mm-hmm. ya kwenda kununua pombe okay asante asante sana na najua tutaangalia uh, stage ya tano ili tuchukue mapumziko kidogo uh-huh. Uh-huh. full brown sasa mm-hmm. katika ile stage ya full brown addiction mm-hmm. tumesema hapa the withdrawal symptoms are very pronounced na maandisha zinaonekana sana mm-hmm. na wakati tunasema withdrawal symptoms e, ningependa tutaje e, kadha wa kadha mm-hmm. ya kwanza ni zile tunaita physical tremors ile watu wanaita wengine kwa lugha zingine nasikia wakiita gadi mtu anatetemeka tetemeka mm-hmm. e, kama hajakunywa pombe hawezi fanya kitu hawezi shika glasi ya maji hata kutembea saa zingine unapata ni shida mm-hmm. ni kwa sababu tulisema pombe inaadhiri ubongo na ikifika to that level sasa yenye ni full blown addiction inamaanisha po- the brain haiwezi function bila pombe so wakati hajakunywa the first withdrawal itakuwa ni hyperactivity in kwa kwenye ubongo. Hiyo hyperactivity ndio ina cause zile tremors. Unaweza pata mag- e, labda saa zingine unapata kuna nausea na tapika tapika mm. kama maini kwa shaanza kuwa affected e, na hii pombe saa zingine utapata hata unatapika damu. Kwa sababu of course viungo za mwili already zisha kuwa affected. Mm. E, wengine wapata wanapata ile tunaita anxiety and peer depression kwa sababu pombe pia inaadhiri ile tunasema hivi tunaita brain chemistry na katika ubongo kuna zile vitu tunaita neurotransmitters ndio huwa zina exchange information zinafanya tu function wakati umetumia pombe sana unapata inaadhiri hii brain chemistry ikiadhiri hii brain chemistry unapata pia likelihood ya kupata eh, mental conditions kama depression mm-hmm. na anxiety inakuwa iko juu zaidi unapata pia kuna zingine kama ile alcohol induced psychosis alcohol induced psychosis ni pale unapata ni kama mtu niseme kwa lugha ambayo watu wengi wanaelewa ni kama anakuwa kicha mm. so umetumia pombe to a point that inafika mahali wakati hajatumia ile pombe e, anapata hiyo alcohol induced psychosis anakaa ni kama akili inaruka wengine wanapata pia wanapata zile tunaita hallucinations mm. hallucination wanaona vitu haziko wanasikia sauti 
e, na ama delusions pia delusions ni zile unapata a very erratic way of thinking labda mtu afikiria yeye ndi mitume ametumwa wa kutoka mbinguni mm. so hizo zote ni moja wapo ya zile tunaita uh, alcohol withdrawal symptoms mm-hmm. na Okay, shukrani sana na omba tuchukue mapumziko kidogo tutaweza kurejea katika awamu yetu ya pili ya makala ya jioni hii leo. Tunapoendelea kuangazia addiction ya pombe na kwa kompenzi msikilizaji mpenzi mtazamaji unaweza kusema nasi kwa 0712223385. Kumbuka makala haya yanakujia moja kwa moja live pale kwenye uh, YouTube channel ya Radio Waumini pia pale kwenye Facebook ya Radio Waumini like our page ikiwa bado wale ambao wako pale YouTube subscribe tafadhali pata kushare that video ili uweze kumsaidia mwingine ambaye anaweza kuwa anapitia shida kama hii eh? ama ana mtu katika familia yake ama jamii apitie shida kama hii tunarejea usiende mbali <tune> This is Radio Waumini 88.3 FM. Karibu tena kwenye sehemu ya pili ya makala ya afya jioni hii leo. Hapo ukitegea ita ya Radio Waumini 88.3 FM na makala haya pia yakikujia moja kwa moja pale kwenye YouTube channel ya Radio Waumini tafadhali subscribe na tena kwa Facebook unaweza kutupata jioni hii leo tunaye Joseph Kamau ambaye ni mwana saikolojia na tena anapata ku wa direct ama kuwa guide eh? <laughs> ama kushauri wale ambao wamepotelea katika uraibu uh, mbali mbali moja wapo ni ile ambayo tunapata kuizungumzia jioni hii leo addiction ya pombe vile vile akifanya kazi pale Primrose Rehab and Wellness Center sasa uh, Joseph nataka turudi kwako tumezungumzia withdraw symptoms eh? yeah samahani withdraw symptoms nyingi na pengine unaweza tueleza itakuwaje huyo mtu aliye nazo asipotibiwa ehe sasa mm-hmm. ikifika ni withdrawal symptoms mm-hmm. tunasema kuna mahali zinafika zinaweza kuwa uh, life threatening zisipotibiwa mm-hmm. unapata hata saa zingine kuna zingine severe kama convulsions uh-huh. unapata kuna wale watu unapata kama mtu hajatumia pombe na ako na huo uraibu anapata hizo sh- eh, convulsions na kama hapati matibabu hizi zinaweza lead to complications na zi lead to death na ndio maana unapata wakati sasa tunatibu hii ugonjwa ya alcohol withdrawal uh, hizi alcoholism mm-hmm. eh, huwa tuna focus first on restoring the patient medically na hiyo inamaanisha we first manage hizi withdrawal symptoms kunazo dawa ambazo zinasaidia ku manage hizi withdrawal symptoms mm-hmm. lakini hizi dawa lazima zikuwe zimepatiana na mtaalamu wa afya mm-hmm. eh, na kuna watu wengi ambao wanafikiria kwamba solution ya withdrawal symptom ni kutoa lock Mm, hata nikuwa nije hapo wengi wanasema kutibu ni kutibu na pombe ni kutibu na pombe uh-huh. pombe haikuna matibabu inaleta kwa sababu kitu cha kwanza ndio imeleta haya madhara uh-huh. na ikiwa imeleta haya madhara if unatumia pombe ku deal na hizi withdrawal symptoms ni kusema hutawahi toka kwenye huo mtego uh-huh. wa, eh, wa, wa wa addiction uh-huh. lakini wakati ume pata matibabu kutoka kwa wataalamu ama kutoka kwa the medical team ile iko wale wenye wamesomea hiyo mambo ya kumanage hizo symptoms e, wakati umepata hayo matibabu unaweza kuacha unaweza kupata hizo withdrawals huwa kuna ile tunaita acute withdrawal phase ambayo ndio huwa na hiyo hatari nyingi sana ya complication unapata imeweza kuwa managed medically na unapata huyu mtu mwenye ana, ana struggle na uraibu hataweza hata rudia pombe. Mm-hmm. Si lazima rudie pombe. Of course hizo hiyo acute withdrawal phase kisha hiyo ku feel vibaya kusikia vibaya na kuwa pia imeisha. Mm-hmm. Okay, sasa tumezungumzia five stages ama hatua tano ambazo mtu ambaye yako katika addiction anapitia. Mm-hmm. Sasa ni wakati gani unafika na inaonekana kwamba huyu sasa mtu anahitaji usaidizi yani pengine kwenda kwenye rehab kama mahali ambapo unafanya kazi? Of course from stage 3 mm-hmm. eh, ile tunasema ile stage ya problem use mm-hmm. na sasa hapa kama wanafamilia na kama yeye mtu ambaye ana na ishida ameshaanza kuona 
inaadhiri maisha yake mm-hmm. huu ndio wakati mzuri zaidi wa ku seek help mm-hmm. lakini hakuna stage ambayo mtu hawezi seek help inaweza fika mahali akifeel ni maisha yake imefika akifeel hii alcoholism ina mtatiza sana kimaisha anaweza reach out to help lakini sasa kwa family members unapata sana sana watu ambao wanatumia pombe watu wenye wako na uraibu wa pombe wakati mwingi hawana ile tunaita insight hawafiki ule muda wa kusema ya kwamba wanakubali madhara ya hiyo pombe na kutafuta usaidizi mm-hmm. so wakati imefika hizi stages za huko mwisho mwisho stage 4 na stage 5 unapata sasa e, familia lazima intervene on their behalf na kuna zile tunaita involuntary rehab admission kama sasa tuseme mtu amefika to a point anaiba ndio mm-hmm. aweze ku satisfy addiction mm-hmm. probably yako na psychosis so anakaa ni kama kichwa ina, ina, anakuwa wazimu e, na tuseme labda sasa hata maybe ana three familia akitafuka pesa za kwenda kutafuta pombe ama saa zingine atapia kwa suicide ama ana, ana three ku kuumiza watu wengine kwa wakati huu si lazima yeye mwenyewe akue ni yeye ataamua kwenda kwenye matibabu mm-hmm. familia inaweza amua kwa sababu as i said addiction ina athiri ubongo na ikiadhiri ubongo pia inaadhiri ile sehemu ambayo inapatia mtu insight ya kutaka kutafuta usaidizi. Mm-hmm. Na, Nimesikia watu wengi wakisema ya kwamba yule mtu ambaye amejitolea, amejipeleka kwa rehab mwenyewe eh, akilinganishwa na yule ambaye amepelekwa pengine intervention ya wana wana familia, ule wa kujipeleka atapona haraka kuliko huyo ambaye amechaguliwa na wengine ni kweli? Hakuna utafiti unaonyesha difference mm-hmm. kuna watu wengi ambao wanaletwa involuntary mm-hmm. na wakati sasa tume deal na hizi withdrawal symptoms mm-hmm. na wakati sasa wameanza matibabu unapata pia wao hata kama walikuwa na kata walikuwa nataka huu msaada mm-hmm. wanaanza kuona mambo kwa njia tofauti mm-hmm. e, na unapata pia wameweza ku change kuna wengine wengi ambao unapata mtu amejitolea kukuja rehab na anakuja na ile overconfidence ya kwamba ataweza ataweza kupigana na ugonjwa mm-hmm. na hiyo overconfidence inakuanga ni one of the major causes ya relapse akitoka unapata anarudia kwa urahisi kuliko ule mtu ambaye alishinikizwa na familia na katika ile treatment process akafika mahali akapata insight mm-hmm. kwa hivyo success rate kwa zote it is almost the same. Okay. Yes. Kuna swali hapa mtu auliza je, mtu ambaye yako katika addiction ya pombe anaweza kusaidiwa kwa mashauri bila kwenda kwenye rehab? Unaweza zungumza na huyo mtu na akabadilika? Vile nilisema mwanzo mwanzo mm. addiction is a brain disease mm-hmm. na tukisema it's a disease inamaanisha pia treatment yake ni a bit intensive mm-hmm. na lazima ikuwe holistic holistic inamaanisha lazima kwanza tu na hizi withdrawal symptoms mm-hmm. kwa sababu huwezi kwenda uongeleshe mtu already asha anako na psychosis ama already mwili ana feel vibaya wakati ya kunywi pombe kumuongelesha haitamsaidia mm-hmm. lazima kwanza tu restore medically kabla sasa tuanze mashauri mm-hmm. so huwezi ongelesha tu mtu ana struggle na addiction and, na aweze kuacha lazima kwanza apate matibabu E, matibabu ambayo ni medical na wakati sasa mwili already imekuwa restored to the normal condition then hapo tunaweza anza mashauri mm-hmm. na na najua pengine kuna msikilizaji pale nje ambaye ana mtu wa familia ama yeye mwenyewe ako katika hali hiyo ya addiction hebu tuelekeze ni vipi ambavyo hiyo process ya mtu kuingia kwenye rehab eh? na pengine chenye huwa kinaendelea kwa kwa mtasari tu E, kama kuna mtu wa mm-hmm. familia unapata na struggle na addiction mm-hmm. e, the best thing ni ku, wa, kutafuta ushauri kutoka kwa wataalamu mm-hmm. na hapo wakati mtu ame reach out to us ama ametupigia simu akitaka ushauri mm-hmm. kitu ya kwanza huwa tunamuinvite na tunafanya ile assessment tuna collect history kutoka kwa mwana familia mm-hmm. na kwa wakati, wakati huo tunaweza ku advise on the best cost of a cost of action. Mm-hmm. E, kwa hivyo kama ni mtu bado hajapata ile insight ya kukubali yako na shida, so tunaweza kushauri familia kama ni case ambayo inahitaji involuntary admission ama kama ni case ambayo pia ina, anaweza shinikizwa kutafuta uh, usaidizi akiwa nyumbani. Mm-hmm. Okay, kwa hivyo kuna wale wanaweza kwenda kwenye rehab, unatibiwa, unapata mashauri ukarudi nyumbani. Kuna outpatient program mm-hmm. lakini e, it's usually not very effective mm-hmm. kwa sababu kitu ya kwanza wakati umefika to this level yenye uko na addiction eh, the withdrawal symptoms hata kama uko under medication 
eh, huwa zinasumbua kidogo kidogo so lazima mtu akwe on that controlled environment mm -hmm. akiwa in that controlled environment at least you are able to help them transition through that acute withdrawal phase mm -hmm. probably after amemaliza hiyo acute withdrawal phase then tunaweza fanya mashauri eh, on outpatient basis mm -hmm. na. na huyo mwenye atakuja kwenye kwenye rehab anakaa pale muda gani ama inalingana inalingana mm -hmm. the standard time inakuwa ni 90 days mm -hmm. na uh, three months, three months. Mm -hmm. the reason for the 90 days kuna ile program ambayo huwa tu wanapitia mm -hmm. ambayo kitu ya kwanza we focus on hiyo management ya withdrawal symptoms kuna hiyo detox process ambayo ni process ya kutoa hiyo sumu kwa mwili mm -hmm. lazima pia to make sure tume wasomesha mm -hmm. wameweza kuelewa addiction from another angle mm -hmm. na pia self awareness na tunasema ushauri unafanya kazi kwa ule mtu already ako na information mm -hmm. so hiyo 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 masomo ambayo tunaita psychoeducation ni muhimu sana then katika wakati huyu mtu ako na this information then hapo ndio tunaanza ushauri na ushauri una include huyu mtu mwenye ana struggle na addiction na pia familia huwa tunasema addiction is a family disease unapata kama mtu ameadhirika sana kwa ule mtu mwenye ameadhirika na addiction pia wana familia wameadhirika na unapata in one way or another either wana contribute to this addiction ama saa zingine unapata pia wao wenyewe wanahitaji matibabu kwa sababu the family dynamic kwenye hukati kwenye familia zenye ziko na huyu mtu mwenye ana addiction eh, probably zina kila mtu amekuwa affected mm -hmm. na Okay na kuna yeye anaweza pitisha miezi tatu ama anaweza kaa pale chini ya miezi mitatu Kuna program ambazo zinaenda hata kwa zaidi ya mwaka mmoja ah. lakini sasa mm -hmm. as i said ina depend on an individual basis mm -hmm. Kuna wale watu unapata kulingana na utumizi wa pombe probably the liver is very affected probably peer they presented with psychosis which is quite developed uh, the, the symptoms unapata sasa they take some time before the issue mm -hmm. so this person may need to stay in the treatment program for longer kuna wengine pia unapata they don't have uh, any medical conditions but still uh, they need to go through the process for quite some time dio wapata ile tunaita insight mm -hmm. na kwa hivyo hapa kama nakolewa vizuri kama mtu amepitisha kile kiwango na ikawa pengine kuna madhara mwilini kama liver kupata ku, kuathirika yeah. itahitaji daktari a medical doctor kuwa pale kutakuwa na mshauri mwana psychology ambaye ataweza kumuelekeza kwa hivyo matibabu haya ni kama yanaenda kwa pamoja na mm -hmm. kaya katika matibabu ya addiction mm -hmm. lazi, ina, lazima oh, eh, lazima tukuinaida involve a big team mm -hmm. ambayo iko na washauri mm -hmm. iko na daktari mm -hmm. iko na wale tunaita psychiatric nurses mm -hmm. eh, so treatment lazima ikuwe holistic mm -hmm. as i said the first step you need to restore this person physically in order to restore them physically you need a medical doctor you need them to come and assess, lazima assess who you patient mm -hmm. angalia kama kuna underlying mental conditions that prob could probably be triggering this addiction mm -hmm. and that is the role of a psychiatrist and as i said if you find uh, probably kuna an underlying condition mm -hmm. to say a depression of which lazima ikuwe diagnosed by a psychiatrist then say, the psychiatrist lazima manage condition concurrently na the addiction mm -hmm. na mm -hmm. nauliza swali hilo kwa makini kwa sababu mm -hmm. unajua kwa kawaida ni masuala tunachukulia kwa yani ni jambo la kawaida yani ulevi eh? yeah. addiction ni jambo la kawaida lakini kama ulivyoeleza kweli la hitaji uh, kuangaliwa kwa makini sana ikiwa tu hitaji that big team kuwepo yeah. pale uh, sasa niko pale kwenye stage ya nne hii ya dependency yeah. pale ambapo litueleza huyu ni mtu ambaye haizi fanya chochote kama hajakunywa umemtoa kwenye pombe amekuja kwenye rehab hali ya huyo mtu itakuwaje kitu ya kwanza mm -hmm. e, lazima tu manage medically mm -hmm. to manage his withdrawals mm -hmm. itaondoa ile hamu itaondoa ile hamu uh -huh. e, hata kama unapata saa zingine medications le, huwa zinapunguza ile hamu mm -hmm. na zinapunguza the severity ya his withdrawal symptom mm -hmm. ziko lakini they are not severe na they, may not, they, they can't lead to medical complications so inakuwa ni process na most of his symptoms huwa zinakaa kwa wiki mbili baada ya wiki mbili zinakuwa zimeisha kabisa mm -hmm. e, na, una, na sasa unapata mtu anaweza atakukaa bila 
dawa. Ndio. Mm -hmm. Tumesikia visa vya watu ambao wameenda wakakaa kwa rehab umetueleza inaweza chukua miezi tatu ama zaidi hata mwaka mmoja yes. na katibiwa kawa sawa kaondoka na kisha akarudi katika mm -hmm. ile addiction nini haswa uchangia haya Tunasema katika mm -hmm. definition ya alcohol alcohol addiction mm -hmm. ama addiction in general mm -hmm. tunasema addiction is a relapsing disease mm -hmm. ama addiction is a brain disease Kitu ya kwanza mtu akipitia zile stages zote za addiction na afike to that level ya hiyo ya full blown addiction unapata kuna changes in the brain mm -hmm. na these are permanent changes na akienda through treatment apate kuacha hata kama amekaa suba for up to 10 years bado wako very vulnerable to going back to the addiction yeye hata pitia zile stages za mtu hajawahi tumia mia pombe atapitia yeye akianza tu kutumia atarudi kwenye ile stage ya full blown addiction mm -hmm. so tunasema it's a relapsing disease eh, kwa sababu every hata kama mtu ame go through treatment they are always a step away from relapsing mm -hmm. na the reason most people relapse ni kwa sababu the time wame maliza hii program ya treatment mm -hmm. they never come back for after care so una, wanaamua tumepona ni kwa sawa mm -hmm so i can go and live my life after unapata mtu after amekaa miaka kidogo anasema after all nilifanywa matibabu na niko sawa i can try one drink na sasa unapata wakati ana try that one drink inamrudisha pale pale ambapo alikuwa mm -hmm. na unapata sasa kama pia katika matibabu ya addiction yale mambo ambayo ni underlying hayajakuwa addressed tuseme labda huyu mtu alianza na depression depression ikafanya atafute pombe dio self medicate so wakati ameenda through the rehab process akatibiwa addiction without addressing the underlying depression na depression sio stress depression is a is a is a is a, is a mood disorder na it's a condition that should be managed by a doctor mm -hmm. alongside a psychologist so si ati unaweza ongeresha mtu tu depression iende so when this person mwenye ako na depression ametumia pombe mm -hmm. kufanya hiyo tulisema inaitwa self medication ku deal na uchungu ya depression then hiyo pombe ametumia imefika level ile sasa anahitaji amekuwa ame addict amekuwa addicted na anahitaji matibabu akikuja tufanye matibabu ya addiction na tuacha tukose kufanya ile ya underlying condition ambayo ni depression mm -hmm. kuna high chances ya kwamba atarudia na mm -hmm. na kirudi matibabu inakuwa ni kama ilivyokuwa mwanzo mnaanza mwanzo au kirudi lazima uh -huh. matibabu yaanze mwanzo uh -huh. na saa zingine relapse hata hukua was kuliko ule ugonjwa wa wenye kuliko ile addiction yenye ilimpeleka rehab uh -huh. in the first place uh -huh. ndio naona kuna swali hapa mtu anauliza je pressure ya jamii inaweza sukumia mtu kuingia kwenye addiction ndi kitu ya kwanza we said the first stage ya addiction hiyo experimenting mm -hmm. na experimenting pia inakuja na hiyo pressure ya jamii mm -hmm. labda katika zizi sherehe za familia watu wanakunywa pombe na labda watu wanaamini ya kwamba lazima ukue mwanaume ndio ama utambulike kwenye society isn't lazima utumie pombe ndio utambulike mm -hmm. unapata hiyo inaweza patia watu wengine pressure ya kuingilia katika mambo ya uraibu mm -hmm. na tunao watu wengi ambao wanakuja wana go through watu nafanya treatment na unapata huyo mtu wakati anatoka anasema katika familia yetu watu wengi wanatumia pombe na kukiwa na sherehe kama hutumii watu wanaona ni kama wewe eh, wewe sio part ya familia mm -hmm. nitafanyaje sasa na nikitoka hiyo ni temptation ya kwanza so ni kweli pressure ya jamii mm -hmm. inaweza lead mtu kutumia pombe Okay, naona mda wetu pia umesonga na ningependa tuzungumzie swala la stigma ama unyanyapaa katika jamii kwa wale ambao wako na addiction ya pombe. Stigma mm. iko mm -hmm. eh, kwa sababu watu wengi wanaona addiction kama moral failure kumaanisha wale watu ambao wana struggle ni addiction ni, ni watu ambao sio wazuri. Mm -hmm. Lakini hiyo si kweli. Mm -hmm. Kumbuka ya kwamba katika hii maisha sisi wote hu unapata saa zingine tu huwa tunafanya wrong choices na for most of us kuna wakati ulipata tuli experiment either na pombe ama any other type of substance mm -hmm. lakini unapata haziku to lead to the direction yenye ina lead hawa watu wenye na struggle na addiction kwa hivyo ni watu kama sisi probably walijaribu then ikawapeleka kwenye njia tofauti mm -hmm. so hatufai kujudge hawa watu tunafaa kuwashika mkono tunafaa kuwasaidia tunafaa kuwatafutia kuwatafutia usaidizi na kitu moja inaweza saidia sana kudeal na stigma ni education watu wengi hawana 
kufahamu ama hawana ile knowledge about this disease of addiction mm. na hiyo ndio unafanya unapata sana sana kuna kuwa na huo unyanyapa mm-hmm. okay pengine joseph ujumbe wako wa mwisho kwa msikilizaji kuhusiana na addiction na pia utueleze tunaweza kupata vipi aha uh, kitu ya kwanza ningependa eh, kuongelesha familia zote ambazo zina struggle na addiction mm-hmm. na niwaambie kwamba kuna hope eh, so mtu amba, mkiwa na mwana familia ambaye anapitia hii shida mnafaa kama familia muungane mumtafutie usaidizi na wakati mmemtafutia usaidizi pia muungane mkue kitu moja na mkue, mkue very involved in that uh, recovery journey ambayo tunasema recovery journey haishi wakati mtu anatoka rehab inaendelea kwa maisha yake yote kumaanisha ya kwamba pia hata kama mmemleta rehab hata kama me go through treatment kuna uwezekano anaweza relapse na relapse hiyo sio mwisho wa maisha yake na sio kusema yeye ati ni mtu mbaya e, lazima apate usaidizi kama vile tuna manage the other chronic diseases zile magonjwa ambayo ni ya maisha mm-hmm. yenye yanakuwa kwenye maisha mm-hmm. hivyo ndivyo tunavyofaa ku manage ugonjwa wa addiction na familia as i said addiction is a family disease lazima kipia familia iko very involved katika treatment ya huyu mtu mwenye ana struggle na addiction na hapo familia ikikuwa involved pia tunaweza ku deal na issues kama enabling ambayo inatokana na unapata kwenye familia kuna ule mtu ambaye either knowingly ama unknowingly ana encourage the uh, the behaviors that lead to addiction for this person who is struggling with addiction so the time this person is involved in the treatment process unapata pia the chances of this person relapsing and going back to the active addiction zinakuwa very low. Mm-hmm. Okay. Shukrani sana. Pengine tueleze tuweza kupata vipi kwa mtu ambaye angetaka msaada wako? Mm-hmm. Mimi niko based eh, kituo cha matibabu kinaitwa Primrose Rehab and Wellness. Tuko pale Kiambu Road area ya Ndegwa na unaweza kutupigia simu mm-hmm. e, unaweza kuja tuongeleshane tuone vile tunaweza kusaidia mm-hmm. e, na labda ninaweza taja namba yangu mm-hmm. ya simu mm-hmm. e, namba yangu ni 0726 na namba rudie e, 0726 mm-hmm. 0726 na Asante sana Joseph kwa kupata nafasi hiyo ya kuiza kuzungumza nasi jioni hii leo kuzungumza na msikilizaji na mtazamaji na tukitumai baadhi ya familia ambazo zina hii changamoto wanaweza kupata msaada ili kuwasaidia wenzetu kwa sababu inauma sana wakati ambapo itawezekana tunazika eh watu ambao ni, ni very young eh? between 15 and 24 years eh? na hicho ni kizazi ambacho kinategemewa tunasema ni kizazi cha kesho ndio viongozi wa kesho kwa hivyo tushukuru sana kwa muda wako na tuwatakia kila laheri mnapoendelea kutoa haya matibabu na ushauri kwa wakenya basi mpenzi msikilizaji na mtazamaji tushukuru sana pia kwa ushirikiano wako na nambari hiyo pia unaweza kuipata hapo kwenye uh, YouTube channel E, tafadhali fika pale pata kusubscribe pata kushare hii video iweze kuwafikia wengine ili waweze kusaidika makala ya afya yakikujia kila siku ya Jumanne mwendo wa saa unusu hadi saa mbili unusu tumekuwa na Joseph Kamau jina langu ni Moni Kongoi Rungu pia tukimshukuru e, ambaye ametuwezesha kukuletea makala haya kwenye mitandao ya kijamii Geoffrey Omari shukrani sana Mungu awabariki We're tuned to Radio Walmini 88.3 FM